So I want to thank the organizing committee to give us, who gave us the opportunity to present our pioneer data about a different type of treatment for Alzheimer's disease. All the collaborators in our hospital are presented and we got a very nice team which include MDs, physicians and also psychologists that of course are necessary for this type of study. I don't need to this very selected group explain what is Alzheimer. It's the most common neurodegenerative disorder in elderly people. But it is important to know that uh, the budget that we are investing to try to cure the disease is very huge, at least in uh, Western countries. Data mention about 100 billion of dollars in USA, especially I think after Reagan, the, la uh, the last Reagan got the disease in USA. The topic is so hard that about five years ago Newsweek dedicated the cover page calling the disease the disappearing mind. And data they have presented and epidemiologists support mentioned that by the year of 2005 as many as 25 million people, uh, 22, will suffer for the disease in, in, in the United States. Now among the different type of dementia is the most common is about 55% of autopsy cases. The second one today we know is Lewy body dementia and also vascular dementia. And today in the morning it was very nicely presented and also yesterday that a lot of cases with AD is not only dementia, it's actually mixed type of vascular plus Alzheimer lesions. The three main components of the disease are the cognitive decay and this is what we teach our residents but in in addition, we have a lot of behavioral problems that at least they are treatable and we can keep the patients with a better behavior. And these types of impairments will affect activities of daily living, which are considered by uh, WHO people disabilities. Now, the disease, the main point that we need to know for the diagnosis is a memory problem and later on we get to, in parallel, another cortical deficits like aphasia, praxia, etc. Also those features need to be represented in the occupation of the patient and in the social functioning. NIA and CDS established for research purposes a few years ago, almost 10 I think or 15, that we need to get in addition also validation by some neuropsychological uh, test. And today this field has been very well developed. This is the lady, Frederica Kay, that was kept by Alzheimer five years in a mental hospital till he got the autopsy. He thought that this is presenile dementia, Today we know that this is not true, this is dementia Alzheimer. The main features he described with Dr. Perugini, actually Perugini did the autopsy. He was a visiting scientist from Italy, but because of uh, political reasons, Perugini was, was taken out from the description of the disease, and Kreppelin, a few years later, called the disease Alzheimer. So Perugini is not more in the disease. The main features are neurofibrillary tangles, positive to Bilchowski, also in the uh, uh, neurids, and the, of course the Senai plaques with amyloid, which are a very hot tissue in the treatment of the disease. In addition, during the years it was clearly discovered that there is a loss of cholinergic uh, uh, impingement of the cortex, the nucleus of minor is uh, lost, and in addition also the septohippocampal pathway is seriously damaged. So there is a loss of acetylcholine in the system. Uh, the first area that apparently in, in biology we know that is affected in, in, in Alzheimer is the hippocampus, the subiculum, presubiculum and the dentate area. Now, this is the reason that we thought in the 90s that we got the panacea, the magic treatment. And the, re the, 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 the uh, medications that were available 
were cholinesterase inhibitors, donepezil, rivastigmine, galantamine, and uh, NMDA uh, drugs that are not so useful. Now, questionable is we have other disorders, and we thought that this is the best drug, but later on, it was published in Lancet 2004, a very long-term study concerning the benefit of donepezil, and the conclusions were that donepezil is not cost-effective when they compared it with placebo, four years the study, with benefits below minimally relevant thresholds. The conclusions were clear-cut exposed. More effective treatments than cholinesterase inhibitors are needed for Alzheimer's disease. So we use cholinesterase inhibitors, but good studies show that they are not so useful. Now, it's important for me to remind you the, what is the relation between learning and memory. Learning is the process of acquiring new information, and memory refers to the persistence of learning in a state that can be revealed at a later time. This is important because memory is the function that we consider, a, I would say, a must for the diagnosis of Alzheimer's. Learning has an outcome, and we refer this as memory. Uh, we know that memory is divided in encoding, storage, and retrieval process, and we know that encoding uh, refers to a double process, one which is acquisition of information and consolidation. And this is the step mainly that is affected in Alzheimer patients. So they have serious difficulties to incorporate the new information, even if this is not conscious. Uh, storage and retrieval, of course, are a consequence of the problem in encoding. Now, what are the new non-pharmacological approach during the last years? People have been continuing investigating the topic, and we have more and more papers talking about the benefits of, of cognitive training for mental difficulties. In addition, during the last five years, we have more and more publications about the benefits of transcranial magnetic stimulation, TMS, and transcranial direct current stimulation, which is not yet so popular, but I think it will become more popular in the following years, maybe. Now, the cognitive training that sounds very nice, and everyone in the television and in any, any radio program talk about cognitive training, Sudoku, and all kinds of things to persist. However, when you analyze the results, it was Birks in 2009 that published a very important Cochrane revision paper, mentioned that a less effect is considered to be obtained with cognitive training and that means compared with drug treatment. So although the public is very happy that they do cognitive training, a very good analysis in, in randomized studies have shown that this is not true, and even it is less effective than uh, the drugs when we submit patients to drug treatment. Transcranial magnetic stimulation is a relatively new technique for non-invasive and painless brain stimulation. The application produces electromagnetic field in the brain that induces, if applied repetitively, a modulation in brain cortical excitability. Now, high-frequency TMS, repetitive, has been used in the last years in several publications for depression, schizophrenia, and Parkinson. Actually, FDA and also the European uh, 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 see, yes, they have accepted it as a treatment for resistant depression. So it is a system, a treatment that has been accepted. Actually, it has been used in state of the ECT that was so popular in the 30s. Now, we don't know the exact mechanism of the RTMS, but we know, and it has been suggested, that involved the increase